Good morning, my name is Jacob Bolger, I'm an artist sculptor, and this morning we're going to make a little owl sitting on a rock. Now I made this little guy uh, last night and um, decided that it would make a really nice uh, tutorial. So I'm going to make something like it, probably won't be exactly the same, but we'll give it a shot. And um, so we're going to be using a stone, and the best thing to do when you're using a stone is to seal it. I like to use an acrylic product, um, and I'll put that in uh, down below the video in the video description uh, in the tool and supply list. Um, but if you can't find that product, you can also use um, a lot of other products, and I'll, I'll list some ideas that you can try um, also in that uh, video description. Um, also in the video description will be baking instructions and other support information uh, that, that you might need. Um, now all I do basically is paint it on one coat. And what it does basically is it stops the stone from being so porous that the clay won't stick to it. Then once you do that, it's a good idea to set the stone up on something like that so that they can dry all the way around and then you want to clean your brush make sure you clean it and whatever solvent is necessary in this case it's water now we're going to be using polymer clay uh, the, my brand of choice is Sculpey 3 um, it's really great for sculptures and I use it a lot and um, with when you're sculpting on a stone, you want to make sure that whatever clay you decide to use, if it's not uh, the Sculpey 3 brand, that it will stick to the stone, okay? Um, and that sort of thing. So you want to make sure that it will stick to the stone. That's the main thing. Um, you also want to knead the clay like I'm doing here, and uh, that also conditions it and mixes up all the ingredients within the clay. And I've already been doing that for a few minutes before we started. So we can just go ahead and get started. Now, we're going to be using glass eyes. Like this. And in the video description, there'll be a source, online source, where you can buy glass eyes. These are 12 millimeter size. And that's what I recommend for this, uh, for this project today. 12 millimeter same size I used in this other owl here. These are black eyes. Um, I like the black eyes because you don't have to deal with any pupils or anything like that. Um, and uh, they also are very expressive as you can see in the uh, other owl. Um, and it's really good to have a picture of an owl that you want to kind of get some ideas from when you're working, you can go to Google and do a Google search um, for owl sculpture or owls in sculpture. If you did that, then you'll get sculptures of owls, pictures of them, and it's a lot easier to work from a picture of a, uh, of a sculpture of an owl because that's what you're actually making. Um, we, we want to make this owl that we're going to do today about the same size as this one because the eyes, the size of the eyes versus the size of the head of the owl make, are, are important. If you make a really big owl and you're using 12 millimeter size eyes, the eyes won't look near as expressive as they do uh, in this case with a smaller head. So we're going to start off with a little ball of clay like this and uh, roll it into an oblong shape like that and then you can take your thumbs and press in like that and now you can take your thumb like this and you can press in going around this part here which will kind of flare it out
and and kind of define it a little bit more the part where the eyes are going to go Now what you can do is take a, um, a tool like this and we need to make eye sockets for the, um, for the eyes. So what I do basically is just press in to make the approximate size of the eyeballs. And just move the uh, the ball. This is a ball tool, pretty common with um, sculpting polymer clay. Then you can just take the eyes. It's pretty simple. They have a little. These particular ones have a little metal loop on the back. You can put them in the center of the eye socket and just press in. And I recommend doing this with both eyes at the same time so you can kind of get them positioned right. And then I just I just keep pressing them until they get to a place where I want them to be. And I do check this angle. I check all the way around as I'm doing it. I do want them to kind of be coming out of the head a little bit. But not a lot. I don't want it to be like really bulging a lot. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm just sort of kind of smoothing this, uh, this little surround here. And uh, by just pressing, uh, there's a lot of pressing in this type of making a sculpture like this. Just pressing and kind of uh, shaping it to the way you like. Now what we can do is take a little bit of clay, like about this much roll it into a little ball and then into a noodle shape like that or an oblong shape and put it right here for the nose and then I blend that in all the way around you can use a sculpting tool if it's hard to get to. Uh, I would like you to keep in mind if this is new to you, you've never done anything like this before, you know, you just have to be patient with yourself because it takes a little getting used to. And also your hands are not used to doing it more than likely and so it might be a little bit more difficult than perhaps how I do it for me. So just be patient with yourself. You can take lots of breaks um, and then come back to it or that sort of thing. You know, whatever it takes to just relax with it. You will be able to get it. Practice is going to be key for you. Practice a lot. Making different things. And then I'm just shaping. So this is the peak, obviously, the peak of his nose. At the end here, if you look at this, I'm kind of got it coming up and, and pointing upwards a little bit at the end. Just makes it a little cuter. 
around the eye, you can take your thumb or finger and you can just press in the clay around the eyeball. And now we'll add some eyelids. Eyelids a lot can add to expression for any kind of creature that you're making. We'll just do some really simple ones here. So we'll make a little shape of clay like that. And then put it on there like that. So it's just like over the, this corner of the eye. Make another one for the other side. Whenever you're doing this, like this type of thing, eyelids, putting your eyes in, whatever, it's best to get them both going at the same time so you can kind of match them up. So once you get them positioned, you can uh, blend in the eyelid to the top of the, uh, to the eye frame. And then you can, if you need to use your tool, see that like gap right there? Just all I'm doing when I said blending is to blend that into the rest of the head. And then this here also. And then you can you can smooth that with your thumb. You can also smooth it just by taking your thumb and patting it and applying light pressure. That will also smooth it out for you. Now I'm going to go, I'll go around the outside again of the, um, that surround around the eyes and just press in. You know what, he's really, really cute already. This is a very easy, um, uh, project and it's, uh, you know, it's going to be amazing for you and your, um, uh, You'll, uh, I'm sure you'll really enjoy your owl, but remember, just be patient with yourself. It's new. It's a new thing. Now I'm going to go around the outside here, and this is where the body is, and uh, just shape that a little bit. And then you can take, um, you can use any kind of tool, really. Um, let's, let's use this, for example. Um, to stipple uh, the texture, um, to create a texture and stippling on the body, you can just basically touch it with a tool. Like that. And it kind of gives it a little bit of a fluffy uh, appearance. You can use any tool for this. You can use uh, you can use this. You can use this. It just doesn't matter really. Whatever you like. Of course, each tool is going to offer a different type of texture. go around and get all the um, the area keep in mind that if you're touching it with your fingers you can 
obscure what you're doing. You can, you know, basically smear away or erase what you've just done. So the best way to hold this is to just cradle it. I'm just cradling it here. I'm not gripping it with my fingers. See how that, by, even by not, you know, even by just cradling it, it, it uh, kind of erased that, that texture there. So just keep that in mind. But you gotta hold on to it somehow, you know, so you might have to go back and just touch it up. But you definitely don't want to be careful not to put your fingers on the thing like the eyes or the surround of the eyes because um, you know that you don't want to mess up the eyes you don't want to mess up your work around the eyes now what I do is I take a sculpting tool like this it's got kind of a sharper end here Just cleaning up around the eye here real quick and then what you can do is you can take this and just make a little line like that just by pressing in see and I just go around the whole eye. Like that. And just do that on both sides. Try to make the distance in between each little line to be about the same on both sides of the eyes. There we go. Wow. It looks pretty adorable to me. Okay. Now, our rock at this point has dried mostly. And um, we'll put them on there in just a second. Okay, so when you want to put your owl on, on your rock, there's a couple of things you should know. If the rock is uneven on the bottom, and it rocks around or something like that, you can take a little bit of clay, you can make a little foot by rolling a ball, pressing it onto the rock on the bottom, like that. And then just using that as a, uh, as a foot for, uh, for the stone to keep it from rocking. If you need to add more than one or two, that's fine. You also can use a different color clay. Uh, the reason why I use the color black is because the finish looks really good on the color black. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a few minutes. Now, if you notice this little guy here in the other sculpture, um, he is sitting on the rock and he's kind of sitting um, tilted like that. The reason why I do that is when I'm making a cute animal, I tend to use, I tend to tilt them a little bit, or tilt their head a little bit because it just seems to add to it, getting that, achieving that cuteness. 
You'll see me do that a lot. You might not have noticed unless I said something, though. So, but because this is all one thing and there's not really a neck and a body and all that, it's kind of hard to tilt it unless you actually tilt the whole body. So, what I'm going to do is decide on the orientation here. Decide where I'm going to put this. And also, I don't want him facing that way. I want him facing up, looking up a little bit, because we're above him. He's just a little guy. He's down here. So, obviously, the orientation and the direction he's facing, whether it's up or down or to left or right, is important. Okay? So, I say probably I'm going to put him right about here. Now, even though I sealed the rock, I want to go ahead and do something called a seed. It'll make it easier for him to stick to it, so I'll take a piece of very soft clay, kind of work it into the stone like this, and then I'll take a sculpting tool, and I will score it, roughing it up. And then I will also decide how he's going to sit on that seed, and then I'll score him down on the bottom here and then sometimes I use this product here it's called Sculpey Bacon Bond and just to kind of ensure the stability of him and being you know solid on the rock I'm going to use a little bit of this it's a uh, baking adhesive so I'm just going to put a couple drops on here like that and then a couple drops where I scored him on the bottom just to make sure that there's plenty on there but I don't want it I don't want it all goopy on there I don't want it you know coming out the sides when I put it on so just keep that in mind so now I'm just gonna put him on the seed <clears throat> he's still is squeezing out the, the adhesive is squeezing out but that's okay I'm just going to um, kind of twist them into place. Now, when I'm, when I'm twisting them into place, I'm not trying to uh, deform his, his body or his head. I'm just, uh, I'm just kind of pushing lightly and twisting. And you can see I'm moving my fingers around so that I'm not just pushing in one spot because that could deform the clay. And I want to work it in there a little bit. And then I want to position his head so that he's looking looking up towards me. And then what I can do is take a sculpting tool and just uh, cut in where I joined him, where the seed is. And push the seed that's kind of squeezed out along with the adhesive back kind of underneath him again or closer to his body so it's nice and clean I'm just uh, going around and just gently taking my tool and pressing it And kind of cleaning that up where it joins the seed. This will give it a really good bond and it will last for many years. So he's kind of sitting, and also tilting him like that makes it more natural, you know. Now what you can do is you can take a little bit more bacon bond. Just put a very small dab in, around, around to the front of him, like in here, and just... Kind of smear it around a lot, because, a little bit, because we're going to add uh, his feet. And this is how I make owl feet. 
Basically, I roll a ball of clay like this, make it a little oblong shape like that, and I make three of those about the same size. Well, actually six, because it's going to have two feet. So that's three toes there, and you can have three toes on each foot. So I want to make six toes, all about the same size. Okay, now what I do is I take and put them side by side like that and kind of squeeze them on the back end. I can take a sculpting tool and blend here where they join. So that is one foot right there. I'm going to make another one here. And then squeeze it in the back and blend it on top. Then you can place it up underneath them like that. And position it the way you want. <clears throat> and then you can take a sculpting tool and just cut it in. The bacon bond will hold it securely to the rock because if you pressed it into the rock, it might uh, damage it a little bit. And then you can go back and take your sculpting tool and apply, you're just holding onto him with your finger to stop him from bobbing around. You can go back and fix any of the erased um, uh, texture that you put in with the ball tool before. I do recommend signing your work. You can use um, a sculpting tool like this and sign your work. And then just, you know, take your time and go around and clean it all up and make it look nice and neat. I'm going to tilt him a little bit that way. So he is still at a slant, but he's not quite so much at one. And then again, whenever you touch him, basically you're going to erase so sometimes that texture, so you have to go back. Okay, we're going to be doing the finish on our little owl. Uh, we're going to be using Pearl X pigments in the color Antique Bronze. I really like this color a lot. Um, and I, what I do is I dip it, dip my finger in the powder and then I swirl it with my finger just to kind of subdue it a little bit. And then I just go over and I just um, lightly uh, highlight the sculpture. And uh, what I can't get with my finger I can do with a brush after. 
because my finger is kind of a broad surface and it's kind of hard to get to all the detail. For this finish I'm really looking to do kind of a subdued finish. I don't want it to be really bright. I just want to um, highlight it mostly. really uh, a beautiful shimmering um, uh, finish and it has uh, a lot of character really I think and then what I'll do is take um, a small paintbrush like this dip it into the powder dab it off on the table to get most of the excess off and then I'll just uh, go around and touch up the eyes Kind of touch up the sculpture and get any uh, areas that I want to get that I missed. And there he is. Now if you're, you're, you're going to bake him and um, you just follow the instructions in the video description down below the video. and um, Don't worry about the stone. It, the oven in this application will not get hot enough to, um, to hurt the stone. You know, if you like this video, if you think it's cool, I'd really appreciate it if you would not only hit the like button, but also uh, share it with your friends and on any social media that you're on. Um, please subscribe to my channel. I do a lot of videos along these lines. And uh, comment. Uh, leave a question if you have one. I'll reply. Um, keep in mind that I do make things for people. If you like something made just for you, and please visit my art shop. And so there's our little owl, and as you can see, it's really not a hard project at all. Hope you'll make one, and I hope you'll send me a picture. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.